Hello and welcome back to DivideTheWord.blog. My name is Ralph Brickley and I wanted to make a number two follow-up video to why I don't go to church, part two. Now there was a little bit of confusion from one individual who uh, came off a little crass and brass in the beginning. After we had some conversations he chilled out a little bit, but, but that individual conversation really highlights one of the reasons why I don't go to church. But I want to I set a couple things straight right at the beginning of this video. I don't go to church because I don't believe in church. I didn't say that. I do believe in church. <clears throat> I don't believe that North American church follows the biblical model of church. So if anybody took away from video number one that I was saying I don't believe in church, I never said that and I never implied that and I never meant to imply that if I did. I didn't even say <clears throat> that anybody who wants to go to church shouldn't go to church. In fact, I know a lot of great, great people who call themselves Christians, and I believe they are Christians, who uh, do their very best to follow after the Lord, who do their very best to serve other people. They serve in voluntary roles. They serve in food banks and, and the things that I would consider to be important for a Christian to perform. They do those things, and they go to church. There's nothing wrong, in my opinion, with a person going to church. I never, ever wanted to imply that. What I did want to uh, say is why I don't go to church. People have asked me uh, if I go to church. People have asked me if I'm a pastor. People ask me if I have a church or if I'm going to start a church. And, uh, and my answers were no, but, but it was mistaken that I was saying I don't believe in church. I do believe in church but not the North American typical everyday style of church that you will see in the charismatic movement and uh, kind of the mainstream movement where church has become a rally for loud music, rock and roll, lights, purple, blue, yellow, green lights, smoke up in the rafters, uh, sparkle machines that, that drop smoke and sparklies in the air to kind of stir the emotions of people and we're emotional humanity we need emotions but when church becomes nothing more than this charismatic model of stirring the emotion and causing people to uh, kind of trance out and uh, do things that are unbiblical that's where I turn off and secondarily uh, the North American model has really turned into money if you really consider church your uh, church that's going to hold 500 people, 1,000 people, uh, 5,000 people, up into the mega church range, how much money does it take to build that building? How much money does it take to keep that building warm or cooled, uh, electrified, water? How much money does it take to furnish that building? How much money does it take to parking lot that building? How much money does it take to landscape for that building? Just thinking about the massive and sheer amount of resources that go into church and then think about how much more suitable to the gospel that money could be used feeding, clothing, sheltering, uh, and doing the works that the, that the Bible actually spoke of. Now, in and of itself, is there anything wrong with having a building? No. I'm not ever going to say that, but I am saying that if the getting a bigger building and a bigger landscaping and bigger office for the pastor and and bigger sound systems and a hundred thousand dollar projection systems and uh, I, I visited a church where uh, the the not the main sanctuary but the secondary area was so huge and the the projectors and the lighting and the sound system it was hundreds of thousands of dollars now, do we need that for spiritual growth? Absolutely not. How, how many mouths would that have fed? How many kids would that have schooled? How many backpacks and pairs of shoes would that have purchased? How many meal cards at school would that have bought for young children who go hungry? The things that we were supposed to do for the gospel, for Jesus Christ, to the example of what he gave us, spending the money on sound systems, to me, is antithetical to the message of God. So that is kind of one of the reasons I don't personally want to participate in that type of church. I don't want to put my money into a system that I don't feel like is following the gospel style. I do believe in church, though. And, and as a matter of fact, I wanted to mention that Francis Chan, 
uh, is a man I admire and I, I follow a lot of his stuff and, and I don't agree eye to eye with everything the man says any more than I agree with everything my previous pastor said or John MacArthur or just name all the names that are out there that are big in the world, well-known uh, uh, preachers and teachers. But Francis Chan did something I admire greatly. And if you go on and YouTube him, his story, he had a mega church, he had a 5,000 person church, and he came to one day where he realized this, he says, God, this, this, is not, this is not what you wanted us to be doing. Like here, I come to church every Sunday and I'm the only one exercising a gift. And all these people come and I've got to force them to love each other. I've got to tell them to get up and shake each other's hands. And, and they all have, or supposed to have, a spirit-given gift. It's faith, or it could be charity, or it could be teaching. It could be whatever their gift is from the spirit. They don't use it. They just come sit in a building and listen to me exercise a gift. And then they go home, and that's the end of Christianity. And he, he just began to realize this is not what we were supposed to be doing as Christians. We're not loving each other if we're just showing up into a building that's so crowded we have no possible way of knowing one another. And so he started a foundation called We Are Church. And you can find it online called wearechurch.com. And this is something that I've turned to towards what I believe is the biblical application of church. Home church. True fellowship. You get 12, 20, 25 max people who are coming to church and you're, you're shepherding them if you become one of the pastors. Uh, but, or if, you just, if you're the saint, you come to church, you, you have this pure connection with the brothers and sisters. You are there to bear one another's burdens, as the scripture says. The scripture says that pure religion and undefiled before God is this, that you visit the fatherless and the widows in their time of distress and you keep yourself unspotted from the world. Religion is supposed to be going to those who are destitute and needy and supporting them. Not building bigger buildings. Bi building a bigger building does not create the capacity to support more people. It creates a system that requires more people to pay to keep the system running. So the Francis Chan model of home fellowship and pastoring in your home uh, is the model that I appreciate. It's the model that I feel for me is the what I see in Scripture. Uh, do I disagree that, that, that Paul set up churches? No, I don't. But I don't think it was a mega church. I don't think anywhere in the Scripture where you see church or they talked about fellowshipping or they talked about assembling together. It wasn't a mega church. It wasn't lights and smoke and PAs and, and uh, rallying for more offerings so that they could buy more chairs. It was not that. The Christians came together in their time of desperation. They, they assembled to pray. They assembled to seek God. Uh, as Jewish origin in, in Christianity, they were used to the synagogue where once a week they, they listened to the reading of the Law of Moses. And now we turn that to talking about the example of Christ and the example of the apostles. And that is what I see church being. So in response to part number one of why I don't go to church, it's not that I disagree with church. I disagree with the form of church, the form of godliness that denies the power of God. I want Home Fellowship Church. I want the Francis Chan We Are Church dot com model, and that's where I would go with uh, forming church and and being involved in church. That's what I would do. Uh, so, just wanted to clear the waters on my first video of why I don't go to church. It's not that I disagree that we should be in church. I di I don't want the impression given that I'm against church. I do see a flaw in modern Christianity that has become nothing but a system that requires more money and human resource that gets wasted instead of talents being used. So I hope that clears up the waters on what I was saying in my first video about why I don't go to church. God bless. I'll be pushing out another video here tonight, tomorrow, for the next in our series of Vague Dogmas, so I'm looking forward to seeing you there. And of course, I always hope to hear back from you on these videos with your comments, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.